Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Olivia Lemon. A beautiful start to the work week, but it looks like it may not last for long. Let's get a first look at our local forecast for more. Hey there, good evening. I'm meteorologist Pamela Gardner. We had a beautiful day today after we got rid of the frost from the morning. Now we're starting to cloud up this evening and our temperatures will stay steady because of the cloud cover. We will see a spot shower chance too after 11 o'clock tonight as our next system rolls in a little weak disturbance. But overnight tonight overall we're in the 40s. Fitchburg 40 degrees 41 in Worcester and a wind from the south southeast. This will help to elevate our temperatures tomorrow even though we won't see a lot of sunshine, but we will see some scattered showers in our high temps in the mid to upper 50s. 55 in Worcester, 58 degrees in Fitchburg, even some 60s found across parts of Massachusetts, south and east. But in just a few minutes here, we have the fall feeling early this week, then we get wintry by late this week. There are a couple of rounds of showers between now and then, but then there's a chance for snow, perhaps. Thursday into Friday. I'll show you the early timing, some track possibilities, and what we can expect coming up in your 10 day. The Worcester Public Schools are lifting their Triple E ban. Worcester's athletic director says some football game schedules will change. Doherty will now host St. John's in a playoff game Friday at 6 p.m., while other teams will still play Saturday morning and afternoon. Worcester's outdoor activities restriction went into effect in September. Worcester's municipal election is Tuesday. Voters will have a chance to elect their mayor, city councilors, and school committee members. The city says putting on an election can be expensive, so their hopeful turnout will be a lot higher than it was for September's primary. Our Chandler Walsh is in Worcester with more. Chandler. Olivia, polling locations open in a matter of hours. Several candidates are doing some of their final standouts tonight. A long list of them are looking for votes, and the city is looking for voters to turn out. The polls will soon open for Worcester's municipal elections. The election commission is working overtime, hoping for a more than 20% voter turnout. There are people that are uh, making decisions that affect our lives and we should have an impact on that. Assistant City Clerk Nico Vangeli says an election costs around $150,000 to organize. The price doubles with this year's preliminary election in September, where turnout was 8.7 percent. We put a lot of effort into the process and we will make sure that you know, hopefully a lot of people show up tomorrow. Longtime city councilor Constantina Lukes isn't seeking re-election. She says preliminary elections are helpful for first-time candidates. It gives them a chance to evaluate what's going on in the city, evaluate their own campaigns, change their strategies, maybe work harder in different parts of the city. For candidates, it's important. Uh, for the taxpayers, maybe not so important. The Election Commission says declining turnout is a statewide trend. More than 100,000 people are registered to vote in Worcester, but many haven't considered participating in elections. I'm not voting tomorrow just because I have no clue what's going on. Uh, it's very important if you really think about it, but it's something that not a lot of people think about. I guess we should probably start thinking about it a little more. More than 1,000 people registered to vote since September. The city hoping this means more will make it to the polls. It's an exciting uh, election season as we've witnessed. There's a lot of candidates on the ballot and it's very important because the choices that we make tomorrow will decide the future of the city for the next two years. There are four races on tomorrow's ballot for mayor, at-large councilors, district councilors, and school committee members. Polls are open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. in 50 locations. In Worcester, Chandler Walsh, Worcester News Tonight. Major developments in the case of the man accused of killing a state trooper. The lawyer for David Jaguna has withdrawn from the case just days after Jaguna was removed from court because of an outburst. John Maroney has the latest. The lawyer for the man on trial for killing state trooper Thomas Clardy is out. David Jaguna says he's no longer confident in his longtime defense attorney, so Peter Ettenberg has been replaced. We've had differences, me and Mr. Ettenberg. Your Honor, wait, wait, a minute. wait, David, David. I'm sorry for what happened. Why are you people lying about everything? The change in legal representation comes after the defendant's outburst before last week's closing arguments during which Jaguna expressed his displeasure with Ettenberg. The 33-year-old defendant is accused of driving under the influence of marijuana in 2016 when he hit and killed Clardy, a father of seven and state trooper who was performing a traffic stop on the Mass Pike. 
I think it's unfair to Mr. Jaguna. Attenberg admitted to a break in his relationship with his client, but asked to stay on. I think it would be unfair to the defense team who has put in a tremendous amount of work in the defense of this case to leave the case at this point. This was a bench trial, and Judge Janet Kenton Walker has yet to issue a verdict. But she did appoint Michael Hussey as Jaguna's new attorney. I am not assured in my mind that he has the faith and confidence in the attorneys to represent him as he believes he should be. Now, this move could delay a final verdict as the judge gave the defendant's new defense attorney time to get caught up on this case. In Worcester, John Maroney for Worcester News Tonight. Many in the Jewish community report anti-Semitism is still a big problem in the United States. According to a new survey from the American Jewish Committee, 88% of Jews think anti-Semitism is an issue in America. 84% said they feel it's increased over the past five years. Almost half said a Jewish institution they belong to has been a target of anti-Semitism in some form. Local organizations are taking steps to address this issue in their community. We've always experienced anti-Semitism and we do a lot to protect ourselves uh, against those forces, but we'll continue to do outreach, we'll continue to educate the community, uh, and we'll continue to live life, which is what I think we need to do. The results of this year's survey are similar to 2017 when 84% of people said anti-Semitism is a big problem in the U.S. Gravestones are found knocked over at an Uxbridge cemetery. People visiting today say it appears to be vandalism, but police are saying otherwise. Our Valerie Bell joins us in studio with more. Valerie. Olivia, that's right. Multiple people at Prospect Hill Cemetery I spoke to today said they believe this is vandalism, but police, however, say that's not the case. There are close to 800 gravestones at the Prospect Hill Cemetery. So an Uxbridge resident, Paul Knossen, heard some were damaged. He wanted to come see for himself. We just wanted to check. Uh, there, were, there are two stones down below here where my parents are buried and, and where I will be someday. Knossen said he thinks what happened here was vandalism. It'd have to be an awful big hurricane or a tornado to do anything like that. And even then it wouldn't happen. Uxbridge Police Department responded to the reports, but say they aren't conducting a criminal investigation. Right now we're looking at possibly weather related based on this weight of the stones and the amount of rain we are getting that they may have just over time fallen over. Roy Henry is a member of the Historic Cemetery Committee and has loved ones buried here. He walks through the cemetery almost every day and he believes this was Halloween related and happened overnight. This gate over here is so isolated where you don't detect anybody coming down. Now, although the sign leading into the cemetery reads, no trespassing after dark, they believe the only thing they could do to prevent people from coming in is to put a lock on these gates. They probably should have some cameras mounted in some of these cemeteries in today's uh, cultural atmosphere. Police say there is nothing to indicate the damage to the gravestones was done maliciously. They were from late 1800s, to early 1900s, so they are some of the older stones that are in there. They weren't broken, they just knocked over. But Roy Henry doesn't agree, claiming it's unlikely weather could have caused this damage. Uh, there was a couple of uh, alcoholic uh, beverage cans that were found right here in this uh, general area. So we think that it had to be vandalism. I mean, it takes a lot of force to push stones over that way to 300 pounds. The cemetery says that each gravestone will cost about $500 to $1,000 to fix, and they plan to have someone out by the end of the week to do that. Reporting in the studio, Valerie Bell, Worcester News Tonight. A petition is started in support of Worcester Funeral Home Director Peter Steffen. The Worcester Heritage Society created it after the state suspended Steffen's director and embalmer license last week. The state investigated him for storing bodies in poor conditions at, at Grand Putnam and Mahoney Funeral Parlors. In a statement to Worcester News Tonight, the Worcester Heritage Society President Julie Bowen referred to Steffen as the real hero of Maine South, saying Steffen aims to provide everyone with a decent burial, the 
laws and ordinances need to be changed swiftly, allowing funeral directors to cremate within a reasonable time frame of 14 days. The group is calling on the city to authorize the cremation of unclaimed bodies within two weeks of being received by a funeral home. The petition was released over the weekend and has nearly 1,000 signatures. Westboro is honoring those who served with a big display this Veterans Day. More than 1,000 flags are around the World War I Memorial in downtown to recognize Westboro's veterans. Local businesses donated the flags and the Westboro Veterans Advisory Committee and local Cub Scouts planted them. Veterans say displays like these help bring attention to the needs of servicemen and women after they return home. By having these flags here, you can highlight the monument, hopefully get someone interested in it. Maybe they'll, they'll uh, come in and ask and they may have a family member who's a veteran who, you know, uh, needs, needs some help with something. This is the second year of this new tradition. The flags are on display until November 23rd. Worcester firefighters are working earlier than ever to collect donations for the holidays. Members of local 1009 stood outside Worcester Stop and Shop Supermarkets Monday, accepting donations of turkeys, non-perishable foods, and toys for the Worcester County Food Bank and Toys for Tots campaign. They're also collecting money for both organizations. This year, the firefighters are holding the drive a month earlier. The department will observe the 20th anniversary of the cold storage warehouse fire and honor their brothers killed in the line of duty in December. December is going to be a busy month for us uh, and so we're just we're going to head start and get everything done beforehand. Firefighters will be at stop and shop locations on Grafton, Lincoln and West Boylston streets until 7 p.m. tonight.